everybody so this is just a quick follow-up I uh, wanted to show you guys just quickly um, what this number one mark 3 C grade Lee Enfield looks like under the wood um, I know that's always a big question for any of these guns that come out of Ethiopia um, I'm gonna start with the small pieces in the wood um, so as you guys saw previously this this stock is in some really really rough shape as a matter of fact you can see this there's a massive split that runs through here that they tried to, I guess, hold together with some nails, um, which is rather unfortunate. Um, but I have opted the route of probably using a drill purpose. As a matter of fact, you can see this is a pretty bad split right here, too. There's actually a brass screw that they use to try to hold this together. Um, so, as you guys saw, you know, this stock is uh, it's in some pretty rough shape. Um, I will not be using this stock most likely. Um, in terms of that upper uh, handguard, um, it's not terrible, but there is a sizable split in the wood here. Um, underneath, you can see the remnants of just a lot of general gunk and probably cosmoline. It's unfortunate because the wood was actually a pretty beautiful color. Um, the rear upper handguard you'll notice there's a small split here uh, that's the only major one I actually saw uh, the clip is still in good shape the clip still held in place that clips onto the onto the barrel there I may try to repair this and reuse it I know this is something that um, a lot of times is either missing or busted in these number one Lee infields so I'd like to try to make this work um, let's see the nose cap um, a nose cap is in good shape it's just pretty rusty um, but I think most of this will come off pretty well um, you guys might be able to see this on the video um, I tried to remove some of the stuff on the surface here to see if this number actually matched the rifle I think it does uh, but I won't know until I get it really cleaned up and plus I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to see that um, in terms of the screws that kind of held that in place um, you know this one looks like the end was kind of ground down a little bit but from a thread perspective, um, the threads look good. The heads look decent. They can be reused. Um, that pivoting, I call it a pivoting uh, barrel band, it's in good shape. It's just, you know, really, I don't know how well you guys can see that. It's really coated in cosmoline, just general gunk, uh, along with the sling, sling swivel and the screw. Uh, the screw's in good shape. Threads are good. Uh, just a little bit of surface rust there, nothing terrible. Uh, that sight guard um, is actually in good shape. Uh, you can see here there's some kind of canvas that's gunked up with what appears to be cosmoline. So I'm going to reuse this um, and then some of the hardware that goes along with it. Um, obviously the screw that kind of drops down from the top in there, it's in good shape uh, as well as this stud that kind of comes in. Uh, from the bottom side here um, you know, I was able to remove that um, let's move along to the trigger guard trigger guard has obviously some surface rust um, but I may use uh, the bowling method that so many people have mentioned uh, try to clean this thing up um, just to see what kind of results I get from it uh, the screws that were holding it in are actually you know they look good um, and all these screws believe it or not came out quite easily threads look good on those um, I'm just trying to take this stuff kind of put it back <laughs> where I took it apart um, I did take a decent well I haven't fill stripped my bolt yet but I did obviously take the bolt head off which just screws right off and lo and behold I do have a firing pin we will find out once I field strip this if it's usable and good all that fun stuff which I assume that it is uh, nice thing is is um, this bolt I thought this I'm not 100% certain but I thought this bolt matched the receiver yep the bolt did match the receiver so that's the 38707 I think the nose cap mount matches but I'm not sure but let's get into what's really important okay so let's look at this rifle 
under the wood you will notice there is a ton of just gunk and cosmoline but the bluing is still largely intact one thing I want to show you real quick before I get too far into this is you'll see right here I may insert a picture if this doesn't show up well you see that 27 and then of course you kind of see some proof markings um, this one was manufactured in 1927 why do I say that well I say that because this receiver and this barrel are matched they carry the same serial number um, just on this other side I mean look at all this gunk here and there's a lot of cosmoline in here and quite honestly I think that's why this gun was so well preserved don't get me wrong it looks rough but a lot of the stuff you see here is slattered cosmoline uh, you probably see this part right here that retaining screw is broke off in there on this band that's part of the I guess that's part of the handguard um, I'm probably gonna try to remove that but if it gets to be too big of a bear I may just leave it the way it is that doesn't necessarily have to go back um, as you can see this is one of the ones that had the magazine cut off I do know the ones that were produced prior to World War II uh, they did have the magazine cut off in most cases at least these BSA ones and they were actually removed for World War II for ease of use and from what I understand is that magazine cut off is kind of a holdover in uh, I guess from war practices or tactics that the Brits used um, now you'll notice I have not taken this stock off yet um, I simply just do not have a long enough screwdriver here in the house to take it off I'll have to take this out to the shop but I don't anticipate any major issues I looked in the in the the, uh, the hole in here and the bolt head looks good looks like I shouldn't have any issues getting that apart um, usually what most people do is they'll just get a nice big flathead screwdriver and one of the ones that's obviously uh, not rounded but usually has like four sides to it get the right size wrench to fit on there and then use that to kind of torque it to get that thing get that screw uh, that uh, buttstock screw out of there so um, all in all you know so I don't think I showed you um, under the rear side here I mean it still looks good I don't see any major issues um, strangely enough the rear sight does not match this rifle I'm not sure why but you know just to kind of show you guys you can kind of see all this gunk here literally all I'm doing is rubbing that off with my thumb so it's a lot of cosmoing but the bluing as you can tell is still here I know a lot of people complain about that um, but the bluing still here this thing is perfectly serviceable so when it's all said and done um, it does not have the magazine cut off I don't know if I'm gonna put it back honestly um, I know they were removed uh, during World War II yeah, you can see that stuff just wipes right off um, I'm on the fence about that one but uh, stock is definitely getting replaced um, this is kind of outside of the realm of service well okay so honestly it's not outside of the realm of serviceability but I don't know if I really want to deal with this one um, so anyway uh, you guys saw a picture of the board in the last one. The board looks good. Um, this is kind of what I was talking about. I don't know what this is. Some kind of nylon fabric that was just kind of stuck to it in Cosmoly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a good cleaning. Um, I'm also going to um, be replacing uh, some, some parts on here. Um, I may try to, like I said, I may try to get this screw out here, um, but all in all, you know, I think this thing looks quite good. Um, but, you know, we shall see. That's really odd. What is that? Well, I see something I didn't see before. It almost looks like this was braised oh boy this could be a problem 
This thing may not be as good as I thought it was. Let's take a look at this. Oh man, this is terrible. Guys, huh, I don't know if you guys see what I see. I did not see this in the first video. Well, obviously because it was still in the wood. It looks like they might have brazed this, um, I don't know what you call it, retainer onto the barrel. Oh man. That's terrible. And I don't know what that might have done to the bore right there. Or to the barrel right there. Oh, I guess that'd be the bore, conversely. Hmm. Well, that really stinks. Well, I guess we're going to have to do a closer inspection on that. Uh, this thing may not be shootable at all. Um, I don't know. That's definitely going to take some... All I have is a brass brush here that I'm kind of using to clean this off to look at it hmm that does not look good nor do I know how deep it goes or what the what's happened to the structural integrity of the barrel wow that, that really stinks hmm wonder how tight that is Yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> this could be bad. Could be real bad. Hmm. Well, quite personally, this is going to warrant further inspection. Um, that's really all I can say about it right now. Um, <laughs> up until I saw that, it looked really good. Anyway, uh, there you have it. Uh, <laughs> surprise. Nasty little surprise for me. Um, that may not be safe to shoot. I don't know. I guess we'll be finding out. So, buyer beware is all I can say. Um, I'll just have to, I'll just have to dig into this, guys. To be honest, I really don't know what to say on that one. Anyway, uh, if you like unboxings and like to see what in the world you might get yourself into, like in this case with me, um, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Helps grow the channel. Um, you know, as I said before, I like you guys to you know try to be as informed as possible so you know what you're getting yourself into like what I just got myself into um, I don't know eh, we'll find out about this uh, this is definitely going to take a lot more inspection here so anyway thanks for watching guys and you have a great day